For this lesson, we're going to talk about how to create a footstep sound based on whatever object or material you're walking on. So typically speaking, these are called Foley effects inside of film. And we have Foley inside of the engine itself, but there's like a specific type of Foley named footsteps that are driven initially through the character tool, but it has a bunch of different things that connect to make it work. So we're going to go over all of these little parts that work together to create those footstep sounds. So let's get started by understanding where the footsteps are declared, and that is in the character tool. So if we go to Tools, Animation, Character Tool, we can pull up our dude, which this guy by default is the SDK player, and what we're looking for is some animation that would play out a footstep sound. Let me hide the display options and pull this out because we'll be able to see them over here. Let's go to Locomotion, Relaxed, Walk, and we'll choose one of these relaxed animations. This one's fine, so it's like Walk, Rifle, Forward, Slow. So I'm going to pause this real quick. And down here in the bottom, we can see that we have a keyframe. And this keyframe corresponds to the animation events up here. You'll see that we already have two footsteps. I could just as easily add another and add a footstep here. So if I go and put it at point two, you'll see that now we have a keyframe down here as far as on the timeline where a footstep should appear. But I also need to declare a joint name. So if I were to open this up, I can see it's BIP01L foot. Well, I can do the same just as easily by clicking it and adding it right there. So if I add this, and if you were to hear it, it would create two fast footprints or footsteps, and then one at the very end, which we can't see in this timeline. But if I were to go ahead and scoot this back to like 0.6, you'll see the, the keyframes back here as well. So this is just a quick rundown on how you can change the footsteps, but now we need to understand how exactly these are called and where they come from. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I don't want to save anything because I don't want to ruin it, but what we're going to do is go and look at where they're calling. So to begin with, we can go to our lovely Notepad++, and one of the most important things is in the player.lua script, which if I were to go and look at CryEngine, that one doesn't exist. So if I go in here and I go to my scripts, entities, actor, and I go to player.lua and open that up, I would get this. And this is just the typical player.lua that will assign whatever the player is doing, including up to the point of actually declaring what the CDF file is that is used in the game. So what we're in really interested in is the character sounds right here. And we can see that we have the footstep effect. And it says something about an MFX library. So obviously there is a MFX library that we have to look at in order for this to work. Well, in order to see the material effects, we have to go into another folder inside of libs called material effects. So this is where you get material effects, this file. It's important to note that this is an XML, but it's actually an XML that is written in an Excel spreadsheet. So if we were to open this up, we'd get a lot of color and a lot of columns. It's very, very intimidating when you first see it. But the concept is this. On the top here is we have all these different types of materials. So a material thick, material ladder, glass, whatever you may have inside of your actual engine. So if we come back into the engine and look at the materials, Let's open this up and we'll go and look at a generic material. So let's go ahead and look at metal, because I think we're going to use metal thick on this. And if I were to scroll down, we can see, what are we going to look at? We can do metal, iron. Metal, iron, B, clean. This is exactly what I'm looking for. So the surface type here is what denotes the type of reaction and how the footsteps will play out. So it's saying the surface type is metal thick. And if we were to go back to the Excel spreadsheet, we would see that we have a material there that is metal thick. So now we found the material, and we know what the collision will be. So I need to scroll down to where the player would collide or basically interact with this. And that's down here with the player grunt, and the footstep, and the body fall. We're mainly interested in the footstep player in this tutorial. 
but it gives you a good idea that, okay, so it's doing metal thick as the material that's interacting. So how exactly does this work in line with what we're doing? Well, if I were to go back to my player.lua, I'd have the MFX library, so I need to go back into this folder, and there are FX libs. And in these FX libs, you have footstep player. And this footstep player corresponds to the FX library that plays a trigger. And you'll see that we already have metal thick scrolled open. And this says it does an audio trigger by the name of play underscore C underscore player underscore FTS metal thick. So now that we've gone in there and looked at the FX lib, we can actually come in and grab the audio controller that actually uses the footstep sound. So going into here, we can look at a couple things. We could say C player, and we have C player FTS. And with that, we have C player FTS metal thick. And this is a direct correlation between the sound that's being played within that file, the FX libs, and the audio controls editor. So it knows to fire off this sound of metal thick walk dot og file or ogg file and it will play back for every footstep that you take with the character.